Hello there, I'm Artsy Gamer 7 and welcome back to another video here on the channel. This one is going to be the screenshots video for the giant build that I've been working on that you possibly and hopefully have been following here on the channel where I built this ginormous mansion that I'm going to be putting several sims in and then basically treating it like a reality show and seeing what happens with the help of some mods and stuff allowing me to put multiple sims past eight in a house and hopefully also give a little bit more personality and drama into the game as well. So yeah, there's like 30 some sims that are going to be living in this house and well, it is going to be quite an interesting journey. <laughs> now, as far as this video, I was unsure and I asked in the last video whether or not I should talk and ramble on, maybe even just randomly chit chat with you all, uh, even if it's not necessarily about the build, just to have some noise, some something going on over the video, or if I should do a music one. And I did get a comment um, about just rambling on and talking. So I am going to make that one, but I decided as like a little experiment, I am going to also put one up that has some music in it. So I a lot of my music for my intros and my outros I get from Epic, Epidemic Sound. I think I'm saying that right. And I just got a bunch of songs from there. Some of them have some lyrics in them. Some of them don't. Some of them are just nice um, instrumental songs. So I have a mixture of them. And I thought, you know, why not? I could, I could treat this like a little experiment. Whether or not you like me to ramble on or <laughs> have music in the video. So, but yeah. So this whole entire video is just the screenshots. And basically sort of rounding up the whole build because obviously the build has been going on for a while now it is a huge huge build i actually did not count the number of rooms in this house but there is 30 some characters 30 somewhere in between 35 37 characters that i created in my cat Create a sim, which is um, my D and D character. So if you want to go check that out, there should be a link down in the description below. If you've not got to watch those characters be created, or if you think you've missed some, um, the playlist will be down below, so you can go check that out and sort of get to learn the cast members <laughs> of this upcoming mini series that is going to be in this household. But yeah, there is like thirty-five to thirty-seven of them. And then there is multiple bathrooms. There's not a bathroom for every single person, but it's pretty close. I want to say there's probably at least 20 bathrooms. And then as far as the rooms, now the balconies I counted together when I've actually made like a little list of what rooms equal what dice roll. I've like been setting this up and getting it prepared. I will go into more details in a later video about how that's going to work. I think with that video, I actually am going to be sort of touring the house in a way, sort of. I've done tours um, in on my old channel when I did like monthly collabs and I would actually go into like tab mode and move around and go on a tour like that. So I was thinking about doing that as like another way that you could sort of see different parts of the house, but also sort of show all, I will actually have like some of the characters there as well. Like, you know, should have the characters at the front door or whatever <laughs> so that you could see them as well. I haven't fully figured out exactly what I'm going to do with that video, but that is what I'm thinking of right now, but I will go in and sort of be explaining what's going on and just as like a visual you can sort of see the house maybe see the characters and things like that so that is that is what i'm planning on too so this should be i don't know when that one's going to go up exactly i gotta re refigure out my schedule uh since some things are going to be changing but yeah anyway <laughs> i will go into details of that but as far as uh, rooms i do have at least enough rooms to make a dice from well almost 20 rooms to make a dice from what with the d20 but one of the if you roll a one it is they get stuck in their bedroom so that one wouldn't count so there's probably like 18 19 individual rooms some of the rooms are combined 
together so like the gym and the spas even though the spas are technically almost in a way an individual room the you get access to them if you get access to the gym so on and so forth so easily let's see so we'll just round it up to 20 anyway because there's some rooms that are not counted in that like the living room is not counted the entry room is not counted the kitchen is not counted um the laundry room is not counted but so just to round it up to 20 um add like we'll do 37 so now we're at 57 and then there's like i said easily probably 20 bathrooms so looking at 77 rooms at least so somewhere around a ballpark of 77 rooms plus like you know the outside area this is a huge build like the biggest build that i have ever done ever um i will be putting it up on my gallery my gallery is still the artistic gamer 7 instead of the artsy gamer 7 i'm not sure if that's something i can easily change i don't think it is so i will be keeping it that one and it will always be down in the description below of any of my speed build related videos so if you ever want want to go check out my gallery you can look at any of those videos and see my gallery user id name i also um try to post it on my twitter every once in a while with like some of the builds and stuff i have up there when i put them up there so that's a good little thing to check out as well not gonna lie don't really know what i'm gonna ramble on about I mean, I have a few other things that I want to talk about, at least for the build-wise. But I know that's not going to take the whole time for this video, because after putting all these screenshots together, the video actually ended up being a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, I might go through and, like, double-check to make sure I don't have any repeat screenshots, because sometimes that happens. Sometimes I get carried away and I click the C button twice, or I get distracted by the TV or my husband whatever it may be a cat doesn't matter i get easily distracted and then i'm like wait did i take a picture well let me take another picture just in case and then when i go to put them in videos and things like that i realize i have a double but i think i got all the doubles out already but i might have missed one i'm gonna double check anyway um but yeah i don't know what i'm gonna fully ramble on about it it's funny and i say this i don't know what i'm gonna ramble on about and then i'm gonna ramble on for way longer than I need to because randomly my brain just thinks of something and switches to something completely odd because in my brain it makes sense and in my brain it's connected but I feel like sometimes when I'm speaking it it doesn't seem connected like how do we get from point A to point D <laughs> because point B and point C are in my head but for saying it out loud you don't know that my brain has already went past point B and C because it, it connected in my brain. But your brain obviously can't read my brain. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, it's funny because I actually sometimes... I'm one of those people... So it's, it's weird to me because some people... Well, actually a lot of people. My cat just let out the heaviest sigh and I, I forgot she was actually in my room my recording room and I was like what was that anyway <laughs> um so a lot of people can't don't have like that little inner voice necessarily like they can't have like full-on conversations with what they know is themselves it's hard to explain in some ways but you, you know it's yourself but you you almost treat it like it's not and you are like you rehearse conversations like okay this is how i wish this conversation would have went i would this is how i wish this interview would have went i put especially interviews i play out scenarios in my head and how i'm gonna reply to them <laughs> all the time and like i could visually see things in my head like if you tell me to visualize something in my head i can easily visualize it the, the problem is sometimes i can't get what i visualize in my head out into like a creation like if i'm drawing or like creating a sim or creating a room <laughs> but um i can can visualize it and a lot of people one can't do that vis visual <laughs> can't visually see or like Im like put an image in their head but then they also don't have that inner voice in their head either and I can't comprehend how thinking is for people who don't have this inner voice because that's sort of my thinking 
is I sort of talk to myself in my head and then sort of come to like an idea or a thought process or <laughs> like what is best and sometimes I never figure out what is best for those scenarios <laughs> but I've had multiple times where like I'm either drawing or I'm driving in my car or it's like I'm in the shower or like simply just like cleaning the house or like I'm at work <laughs> in the bathroom or I'm by myself walking from point A to point B whatever and I'm thinking of things of like maybe I should start like a, a little vlog series where like I just talk about random things that come across the day like things that I wish were this way or things that are weird that people do that I see on an everyday basis and like at one point when I was working retail I was like I should do like a, a retail rants thing <laughs> and see how many people have had these issues <laughs> in retail and stuff like that or just like weird quirky qu questions that come up like you know something happens and you're like huh I wouldn't have handled that situation the same as my friend did. I wonder how many other people would have, like, would they handle that situation the same way? Or would they handle, like, like you know, just little chats and little weird things. And then I'm like, nah, that I don't get enough comments on my videos for that to probably take off. At least not currently. So I don't know if anyone would tune in to watch those <laughs> type of videos. Like vlogs of me just chit-chatting or talking. I'm like, those see also that idea partially seems better for when... I start streaming because I do eventually want to get to a point where I can stream right now with my new job which I admit <laughs> um, I don't like my new job per se but I'm gonna stick with it and I'm gonna push through uh, partially for a few different reasons um, I've already been told that I'm partially been put in this place to sort of learn some of the basics because it's not a career field that I've been in before and then promoted so but I, the thing is is I don't know how soon that promotion possibly could be because they're building they're actually there's a lot of construction going on adding new places to where I work it, it's a university so they're adding new buildings and stuff and one of the buildings happens to be connected to like the line of the job that I'm in right now so it's like well when that building is fully completed maybe that's when I'll get the promotion and I'll move over and work in that building or maybe I have to wait even longer or maybe it's before then because she knows eventually someone's leaving I'm not really sure but also there is a chance there is a rule where I work that you can't really transfer to another um, department, division, whatever, until a certain amount of time has passed. So that's also another thing that I'm keeping in mind because this is like the best paying job I've ever had. I do like the fact that I have a, a consistent schedule for the most part. Like I work Monday through Fridays at the same time every day, so on and so forth. But this job is a lot more tiring and exhausting and sort of pushes my physical limits. No, I know there's people out there that would not have that hard of a time doing my job. They still probably get tired and exhausted because it is a constant moving, lifting, picking up, putting down, carrying. It is constantly those type of stuff. You're not, you don't stop moving. Once you get there, you do not stop moving except for, for your break, which is only 30 minutes. And then you go back and you continue to push. <laughs> so I think it would exhaust anyone, but the levels of exhaustion and tiredness would be different depending but me physically even though I did at one point consider myself to be decent not like strong no way that I think I was strong but I thought I was like sturdy and like not really weak but this job has me questioning that <laughs> because it is taking a lot of my strength and a lot of like <laughs> my determination and just keeping mindful like you got to keep pushing yeah you got to you got to keep going <laughs> so it is taking a lot out of me so trying to get used to one the new schedule because before I was working retail and though it wasn't a consistent schedule there was never a time when I was going in at had to be there except for like my most recent job I had to come in 
pretty early if I had to work truck. But if I didn't work truck, then I didn't come in early. So most of the time, a lot of my jobs, the earliest I came in was like 8 a.m., 7 a.m. at the earliest. So, and that was rare, rare cases. And usually it wasn't like 7 a.m., it was like 7.30, something like that. But usually it was 8, 9, 10 o'clock. So I was usually like later in the morning or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm constantly have to be at work at 6 a.m. So I'm getting up every single morning around 5 a.m. Just depending on how soon I fell asleep. Basically, I'll set an alarm, like a timer alarm, to make sure, like, okay, I'm getting this much sleep. And then once I see that threshold go under a certain time, like, if it starts getting really close to only getting six hours, then I'll push my time back. Um, the latest I can get up would be, like, 5.20. But in 20 minutes isn't necessarily a whole lot of sleep, but sometimes it it's enough sleep to get you through. <laughs> So depending on how well I fall asleep the night before, it depends on whether or not I get up at 4.50 or 5 o'clock or 5.15, whatever it may be. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm still trying to figure this out and still trying to get there. Uh, it's also, like I said, I'm constantly tired and exhausted when I get home. So sometimes it's, I just physically do not feel like recording or dealing with it and then also the fact that my husband current his cur he's still at his older job like the job that he had when like we first moved in and even long before that he mostly works mid to night shifts so there's a lot of instances where he's leaving only an hour before I get off before I get home or he's leaving right as I get home and he's not coming home till it's almost time for me to go to bed or I'm already in bed or I'm already just asleep. So that's been rough in a way to get used to. So the days that I come home and he's off or the rare chances that he opens a morning shift. So he's getting off before me or around the same time as me. Then I most likely won't do any editing. I won't do any recording. Even if we're just sitting in the next room and occasionally just talking to each other, it's nice. And I might do some editing in those cases, but I want to be able, I definitely won't be doing any recording on those days. And I will only be doing light editing because I want to be able to spend that time with him. And if we decide to go do something together, I can just, you know, leave where I'm at and not worry about it. So. It's, it's a lot to get used to and figure out and get accustomed to. And plus, before I was working anywhere from 32 to 40 hours. Now I'm always working 40 hours. So it doesn't matter, which I mean is nice. But at the same time, as far as trying to find time to do things, it does make it a little bit harder. So <laughs> yeah. Before I even remotely try to think about streaming and trying to figure out like a streaming schedule or at least a, a loosely based streaming schedule, I want to first get a handle of time management with current situations and with my job, my new job and trying to get the channel going and actually trying to make sure that I do get these videos up every day. I know as of lately... I haven't got videos up every day and I feel really bad about that because I, I talk about how I plan to try to keep with my schedule a lot better on this channel and I've even I've had a few commenters and I've told them like yeah I have videos every day and then if they're a new subscriber on top of that and then I tell them that and then I don't have videos every day I feel like I'm letting people down like new people to the channel and I'm also letting myself down because I'm not doing what I want to but I just sometimes I physically just can't when I come home and then other times it's there's other things that I want to prioritize at that moment so I'm just trying to figure things out and then hopefully eventually once I get that a good idea of what 
is like a good time frame for things and I get more used to it and hopefully I am hoping like I said I don't like this job I have in the past if you've watched my old channels when I've talked about them in vlogs there are other jobs that I haven't liked per se and I definitely will say there are jobs that I have liked and some of the jobs that I would complain about I didn't necessarily not like but there was just a moment in time that the job was rough for whatever reason and most of the well honestly all of the previous jobs that I didn't like or I had moments when I didn't like it it was all due to the coworkers or one coworker like someone in particular was just making it not a good environment and for me I have like a slight I definitely have slight social anxiety but also when it comes to certain social things it really makes me uncomfortable so not only just in the simple terms of someone who doesn't have social anxiety and doesn't get uncomfortable in certain situations. If you're having a job and you're having a rough time at a job just because of the job and then you add into the fact that the people that you're working with are now causing drama or they're making it worse or they're making it harder on you, whatever it may be, they're just making the job worse than it already is. It's like, this job is already tough. I don't need someone else making it even more tough or even more, like, miserable <laughs> in a way. So, like, I can partially deal with the job just being tough and not liking the job per se way better than if I like the job and there's a person that is making it worse. Like, I'm more likely to get upset from a job if it's a person doing it the, rather than the job itself. So, as of right now, with this current job I'm in, there is a lot more people that I'm working with, but at the same time, not. <laughs> so, it's, it's really weird to explain. So, basically, um, my particular job, I'm in, I see people all, di all day, I'm in contact with people all day, but in reality, I rarely communicate with them a lot. There is only one that I communicate with constantly because we have the same exact position and we're constantly basically with each other and helping each other and doing the same job and stuff. But all the other people, I don't see them too often. So even if there is drama going on and even if they have personalities that potentially would make the job more annoying, they're not influencing me that much. So... This one is the first job that I probably just actually don't like the job itself. But I'm able to tolerate it because the people are not necessarily making the job worse. Um, there's a few of the people when I get to talk to them, I actually enjoy the moment of interaction. <laughs> so that's nice. So in between the fact that people are not making this job worse, the pay is better, and I have a set schedule is what is helping me push through this job. <laughs> but I am hoping that eventually, physically, my body can be able to handle this job. Like, that I get stronger. Um, uh, in multiple ways, in all honesty. <laughs> but especially physically, stronger. Um, I also constantly, especially my legs from this job, constantly have bruises. I don't know if eventually your body just gets used to a point to where it doesn't bruise easy. I don't know if that's something that just changes. Uh, I do know that sometimes sometimes it's a vitamin issue and I might even look into that to see if taking certain vitamins will decrease the amount of bruises that this job is giving me but I haven't fully looked into that yet. But so yeah. Anyway look at me. I said I didn't know what I would ramble about and I rambled. Granted, it was sort of about my job, and in some ways it was sort of a downer. I apologize. <laughs> but, um, going back to the build a little bit, I did want to sort of ask, since it is now completely finished, it is completely done, is there any particular room that you for surely are, like, in love with? It's your favorite room? Do you, is there only certain rooms? Like, are you sort of tied? Do you have, a, like, a few favorite rooms? You don't know? You're unsure? Is there, like, any rooms that you wish was in your house? <laughs> uh, I definitely love how this build turned out. And I had so much fun with it. And doing, like, the bedrooms with the personalities and stuff like that. There was a few that ended up being a challenge. Because transferring their 
personality into objects that is available in Sims, even though, you know, I was using CC, so also CC I downloaded, uh, was hard. The thing is, is uh, these characters are D &D char based off of my D&D &D characters I made. So obviously, in some ways, most D and D settings, though not all of them, there are some that are like space settings and futuristic settings, but the majority of them are more of like old, fanciful, sort of back in the day type settings. So I definitely had to modernize these characters to a certain extent, but also because a lot of my CC that I have, I'm not gonna just download. CC that, especially at least for the build, I might do it for Kratosim because I like just doing random Kratosim sometimes and I have fun with those, but as far as builds, I want my CC to be actual CC that I might use in multiple builds on my own time and stuff like that, so like I'm not just gonna download um, <laughs> a lot of random stuff that would be very specific to a very certain scenario or a certain person or whatever, so there are some personalities out there that's like, yeah, I don't really have much to give you for your room, but I'm gonna try my best. So yeah, but yeah, I definitely would <laughs> like to hear your thoughts on the overall result of this build. I w I, I think I already said this, because I did talk about the gallery, I am gonna be putting it up on the gallery. Obviously this is a build that was built with CC, so you will have to keep that in mind. It will not show unless you enable custom content, uh, allow the custom content to show for one. But also, if you put this in your game, if you don't have the CC that I have, then obviously it's not going to show up. But, and I, I'm someone who, I personally, I do not have like some sort of master list where all my CC comes from. One, I do every once in a while clean out my CC. Any CC that is for surely broken, or I'm just like, I'm not feeling it at all anymore, or I just don't like how it looks, or it came as part of, like, a set, sort of. So, like, you can get object sets where it's like, hey, this is decor for this style of living room. There is individual items, but they all come in a group together, so I don't know which items are what sometimes, or what they're going to actually look like in a game. So I obviously just real quickly add them all, and I may not like some of the items, so I remove them but keep some of the other items from the set. But yeah, I do I do clean out CC every once in a while, but at the same time, if it's not bro seeming to be broken or glitchy or whatever, I will leave it in my game, no matter how old it is. <laughs> some people just every once in a while switch out their CC after so many years. I don't. I just if I'm tired of that CC or it just doesn't look good anymore for some reason or I just don't like it or I realize it's an item that I'm not really using much or at all, I'll just get rid of it to make way for new CC, <laughs> basically. But I probably have CC in here that's from like the very first year of me getting CC, which was probably the year after this game came out. So I have some old CC in here. So back then I definitely never thought about uh, having like a list of where my CC came from and so that if I put it in a build that I can tell with people where I got it from. I definitely don't have that. Um, that being said, any of my speed build videos where I use custom content or even in my let's plays and you're watching or my creative sims and you see a piece of CC that you really like and you want in your game, do not feel, like, feel free to ask. Do not feel like you're uh, asking the impossible or whatever. I can't promise that I will for surely find it, but I will try my hardest and my best to look for that CC and figure out where it came from. So if you're like, hey, I like the couch from 13 minutes and 42 seconds, I will go to the 13 minute, 13 minute and 42 seconds mark, look and find the couch, and then go into my game and see if there's any identifying things about that couch that could lead me to who it was, like if it has the name of the creator or the name of the set or both or whatever it may be, that will help me sort of figure out where it's at. And then I will go look for it. And then once I find it, I will actually give you the link directly to that item. 
if I am able to locate it. But I will definitely try my hardest to locate it. But a lot of people put like a list of all the CC they used. I can't do that. For one, I don't know where all of my CC came from. Two, half of the time I'm building aimlessly and I'm just building for fun. So I don't know what CC I'm going to use ahead of time. And sometimes I place some of that CC in and then come back later and get rid of it. So it's not something that's personally, for me, easy to keep track of. Props to all of you people who do that. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I just, I could not. There is just no way my brain could wrap around an idea of how to do that unless I specifically narrowed it down to one custom content creator or a set or like, you know, um, lately the Sims resource has been doing like th theme ones. Like there's a steampunk one, a sci-fi one, whatever. Then maybe I could do it. But <laughs> even then, I don't know. So yeah. But yeah, feel free to definitely ask. If you ever see an item that you know is CC, that it doesn't come from any of the expansion packs or whatever. Or even if it does come from a pack and it's just a pack that for some reason um, you didn't see or you don't remember for some reason. Definitely feel free to ask. I will let you know. And I will try to hunt down that piece of CC to the best of my ability. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my rambling. This video probably is wrapping up in the next couple of minutes. If you want to go watch the version with the music just to see the difference and which one you would like better, um, you can feel free to do so. I'm going to launch, like, upload them on the same day just so that they're both out there. So they're going to go up at the same exact time. So partially want to see, like, which one gets more interaction, which one um, is more notice, which one gets more comments. Taking a lot of things into factor, just as a little experiment. Um, and shortly after this, there should be a video of me explaining in depth what's going to be going on with the miniseries, when the miniseries is going to officially start, so on and so forth. So keep an eye out for that. And also keep an eye out for other things here on the channel. I have two legacy challenges going on. I obviously have my creative sims going on. Right now, Legend of Zelda is going to be the main one going on. There's an, I'll probably have a new one coming up soon. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked the video and you've liked the build, please hit that lovely like button. Subscribe again to see those other videos and to eventually see the mini series that will be taking place inside this build. And hit that lovely notification bell and all that lovely YouTube goodiness. I said lovely a whole lot there and I didn't mean to. Anyway, thank you so much. I'll hopefully see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.